and welcome to Retrobot, the YouTube channel where we feed a friendly space robot a diet of pure nostalgia. Retrobot, buddy, I kind of looked like you wanted to play a game. Is that it? Dude, you are the worst dealer ever. Oh, I get it. So, for those who haven't figured it out, tonight we're talking about Double Dealer. Because he dealt cards and he did it twice. That's terrible. That is just terrible. Well, I guess I'm glad that we're not talking about Oil Slick. So here he is in all his boxed up glory. If you know the history of this character, Double Dealer is really a shady guy. He is willing to work with Autobots and Decepticons alike as long as the price is right. And of course, none of the other Transformers suspect a thing because his name, Double Dealer, is so cleverly innocuous and completely devoid of suspicion that his GoBot pal Traitor was jealous. This is the most recent version, the Transformers Earthrise War for Cybertron version. And, uh, and we can see the packaging here. Of course, once again, very nice packaging on the Transformers Earthrise stuff. A lot of really neat artwork. And, of course, we have the ancient Cybertronian characters here. We've got his name in Cybertronian, or at least what I assume to be his name. And uh, and then we go around to the back and we can see the different modes. We have got a missile truck. We've got a launch platform, or at least the missile truck in kind of a launch platform configuration. It does seem to feature the uh, the connection gimmick that works with some of the other parts formers from this series and some of the bases. And he's got his robot mode. Uh, interestingly, he is still, just like his Gen 1 counterpart, he is sporting Autobot logos in his robot mode. And I don't see Decepticon logos here. We'll see when we get to the toy. But I will say that we have a Decepticon logo right here on the top of the box. So they seem to be maintaining his history of dupliciousness. Duplicitousness? Duplish. Duplicitousness. And whatever the word is, they're continuing their fine tradition. And of course, we've got the legal mumbo jumbo and more legal mumbo jumbo. So let's go ahead and take a look at this character. We're going to take him out of the box. So let's try and get him open here. There we go. And then we can slide out the tray. He does have another Cybertron map, well, a galaxy map, uh, whatever, a Transformers Universe map. And if you use the tech spec decoder, you can see that we have revealed, let's see, my, my camera's having trouble with this. There it is. So you can see that we have now revealed the location of Caminus. If you're familiar with the IDW comic books, that is the planet where where Windblade and the Rust Renegades, which form Victorion, come from, and a number of other characters that have become popular over the last several years. We've got the instructions, and uh, we will pay close attention to those. And we've got, uh, you know, a slip of paper, which is not important. And then we've got him, and we can take the box out of the way, do it very carefully. So there we have him. This is Double Dealer, and right away, the first thing that I notice is his Superman pose. That's pretty great. I don't know why they decided to, pull, to uh, 
pose him that way, but uh, I'm digging it. I uh, I encourage them to put characters into cool poses more often. That That's great for packaging. Let's go ahead and release him from his bonds. There we go. And just cut all the little plastic tabs. There are so many, so, so many, so many tabs and so little time. And here we go, there's the figure. And then we have a lot of accessories with this guy. Uh, a lot more than I've seen with a lot of the other figures. Of course, we've got the missile that comes in two parts, which you can pull that out here and here. And you can see how these go together like that. And already, that is a really cool looking missile. Uh, I don't know what all the things that it does are. It probably doesn't do a whole lot, but I have to say that it looks great and I see a lot of five millimeter posts and holes compatible. So this is a great asset with the toy. Uh, it probably can do all sorts of neat things with the other parts formers from this series and from the Siege line. We've also got what appears to be an engine which may harken back to his origins as a power master. And then we've got this thing, which, uh, which would seem to be that missile launching platform. I'm hoping that it integrates into the vehicle mode. We will find out. And of course, he's got to have a gun. So we'll just give him his gun. There, whoops. Even though he kind of has a hard time holding the gun with that little block on the back, it means that the post doesn't really go very deep into his fist. Uh, there may be better places to put that gun than in his hand. Like for instance, right away, mm -hmm. there's a spot. That's a good spot for it. And then we seem to have uh, bullets or you know, maybe they're bullets. Now these are these are either bullets or maybe some kind of little vials or cartridges or something. But uh, yeah, these are neat. They have a five millimeter post on the back, so uh, we can also stick those all over the place in interesting ways. So here he is in his robot mode, and right away the robot mode looks really good. Uh, let me take the gun out of his arm and we can just see him without any embellishments. And uh, we'll look at him from several angles here. We've got, we've got a lot of articulation, so he can move his arms, he can twist his elbows, he can twist his wrists, he can move his shoulders up and down, in and out. He's got knee joints and hip joints. Uh, he's got the Transformers Siege and Earthrise characteristic ankle joint, which is something that we haven't seen in a lot of other lines. If you go around from the other ends, even from the back, he still looks good. I'm not seeing lots and lots of hollow places on this character, and that's really nice to see because obviously on some of the lines as they try to cut costs, you start seeing a lot of arms and legs that are only made up of a single piece of plastic and then the interior surface is obviously hollow. Now they did do that on the inside of the thigh, but I have to be looking up his skirt in order to really see it and so I'm okay with that. He feels nice and tight, his joints are not loosey-goosey, and uh, the head sculpt is also very nice. Here let's take a closer look at that head sculpt. The, the eyes are red, but it doesn't seem like there's any working light piping. So uh, they still work against that light blue. So also, he seems to have an awful lot of five millimeter holes. 
and that is great. We've got a couple places on the top of his shoulders and further in closer to the body here. We've got the five millimeter hole on the arm. We've of course got the fist. We've got another one over here on the leg and we've got another one over here. So there's all sorts of opportunities to stick stuff to Double Dealer. On the package, you'll see these little bullety looking things attached to his legs. So let's go ahead and do that. And they have the gun on his shoulder. They might have put it on this shoulder, I don't remember. And then we've got this thing, which I mean, yeah, it appears that this thing just clicks right onto his back. You can see these two little slots right here, and then these two little tabs here, and that can just snap right onto the back, and it fits really nicely. And we've got what appears to be an engine here, and really that can go just about anywhere. Uh, I'm going to put the engine right on the other shoulder that way he can listen to the engine as it's running that's important because if it stops running if it runs out of gas he'll want to know and of course we've got the missile here which does come apart and that can serve as an arm cannon and maybe a pair of arm cannons so yeah, and obviously you can arrange these things any way you want, but there's a ton of options and a ton of accessories that come with this guy. Uh, you know, kind of surprising for, uh, for a character that I wasn't even really uh, thinking about before we saw him on the store shelves. Before I transform him into his various other modes, let's go ahead and compare this robot mode to the Thrilling 30 version, which is a straight up repaint of Blitzwing and the original Gen 1, who has just a disturbingly large face. Um, yeah, he's, he's really not an attractive bot and maybe other Cybertronians made fun of him for it, and that's why he became a traitor. But uh, whatever the case, he's gotten an amazing upgrade from his early days, and uh, the Blitzwing mold is a very nice mold, but I have to say that so far, uh, the, the Transformers War for Cybertron Earthrise version so far seems to be vastly superior to every version that's come before. So before I start transforming this guy, I just want to point out one other feature that I think is pretty cool. There are these flaps on top of the shoulders right here. And if you can get a thumbnail in there, you can pull them around. And look at that. He goes from being a friendly, trustworthy Autobot to an evil Decepticon. How devious. So, yeah, he can do that. That's pretty cool. So transforming this guy is not tremendously difficult, but it does require some finessing. So to start out with, we're going to flip the backs of his feet down, just like that. And then we're going to rotate these around and we're going to flip them around this way. And then you can see how there are slots right here in his thighs. Well, this little tab on the inside of the panel is going to tab in to that slot. And that's what requires just a little bit of futzing. But there you go. And we're gonna do the other on the other side. So rotate that around and Get that tab into that little slot. There we go. Just like that. And we'll put the front ends of the vehicle together. And see, we've already got the front of a vehicle. Now we can take the chest, 
pull it out like that, rotate it around like this, and then click it down just like that. Flip down the wrists to conceal the fists. And then we're going to pull these shoulders out. They might be a little sticky the first time you do it, but that's okay. It's just on a little panel hinge right here. And then we're going to rotate the arm around and curl it up like this. And you can see that there is a little tab right here and then a little hole, just a little rectangular hole right there. So you just get those two things to meet up and it's gonna go like that. We can also do the same thing on the other side, just like this. And there we go. And of course we have this panel here that's gonna cover the face and then this panel here that's gonna flip forward. And now we start adding stuff. Oh, the, the bird wing wants to kind of reveal itself. So, yeah, there we go. So now we start adding stuff. So the first and most obvious thing is the missile. So we put that together just like that. And then we can attach the missile right here. See, it has a five millimeter post here, and then there's a pair of holes. It would probably work with either one, but I'm gonna choose the back hole. And that goes right in there like that. And then we'll put that engine, or whatever this is, right up there. And we can put a gun right over here, and add some of these little guys right here. Maybe they're missile batteries. That's kinda cool. Or maybe they're double-A batteries. They could be either, either. They could be either. There we go. And of course we've got this thing right here. This thing is going to peg on using these two five millimeter pegs into these two holes. And they're just gonna go in. Now I've noticed on mine that it seems like it's spread out a little bit further than the distance here, but I am able to make it work. Just put that in there and there we go. Nice tight fit. And then we have these things that can go up here and they're just gonna rest like that. They, they don't tab into anything, which I'm not really a fan of. I kind of wish that there was just something that I could stick this to so that it wasn't free floating but it's a small criticism. And of course this panel can go up. It doesn't seem to want to. It seems like it's shaped in such a way where it's almost coming apart from the hinge, but you can get it to go up. And then at that point, we have got a pretty awesome looking missile truck. That's great. So there you go. That is the missile truck and it is impressive. Once again with this line, we're seeing a lot of detail put into these molds, a lot of textures on the surface. You don't see a whole lot of just empty flat spaces and the colors really pop. And sure, it's based off of a Gen 1 design, but the colors are subtly different and the differences work. Instead of having a straight up hunter green, the, this is actually more of a turquoise. You know, it's, uh, it, it's just a little bit more on the teal side and that blends with the lighter blues a lot better. You have paint details like this, that they didn't have to do, but boy, it looks good. Look at the way that that missile pops. That's fantastic. And then it also has this feature right here, which this is for firing the missile. You can put the platform down and then you have these stabilizers and then you can put this in an upright position and once again, really, really nice design. That is so cool. It looks great, and what great play value. 
Then when you consider that this has the connection gimmick that works with the other parts formers of this series, you, you really can get a lot out of this. I can easily see this linked up to Scorponok or to one of the other smaller parts formers and hopefully you can do some imaginative things with it because it's pretty cool. So here we have him in his vehicle mode and let's go ahead and put him next to his generation one counterpart and you can immediately see how far toy manufacturing has come since 1988. There's really no contest. And this isn't a bad vehicle, but you look at the smooth wheels that are kind of wonky looking and the smooth surfaces that barely have any detail molded into them and then compare it to this and there's really no contest. Also, in another video, we're going to talk about this thing on the back of that missile. So we've got him in his missile truck mode, and it really does look good. One thing that I forgot to mention during the transform sequence is to make sure that the wing tips are both extended underneath, because if not, then it doesn't necessarily want to sit super stable. So make sure that you do that. But what we really want to see is the bird mode. So let's start transforming him. We're going to take the missile off to start with. We're just going to set that aside. And now we're going to take these back wheels, pull them out this way, and pull them out this way. And let's go ahead and spread the arms out at the shoulders. So we can just do that. And then while we're at it, let's just rotate the arms around like this and rotate the arms around like this. And something that you're gonna notice is that there's this conspicuous little tab right here, and there's this little notch right here. So we're gonna tab that into the arm just like that, and do the same thing on the other side, just like that. And then we could extend these if we wanted to. We don't need to right now but at some point we're gonna do it. And we're also going to pull this up. This is the chest plate, and we're going to pull that up. And now we're going to flip this around. Now this is where things get a little bit fidgety. We're going to unlock the side panels from the thighs, go around to the back side, and let's go ahead and pull the wings out just to get them out of the way. So here we need to rotate the kneecaps to lock into the back of the thighs. And so this is a little bit fidgety. Uh, it might even be easier to do it one at a time, but you see how that black tab kind of nests into the slot on the back of the thigh like that. And we're gonna do the same thing on this side and now we're going to put these halves back together like that and now what you're going to want is you see these little tabs right here that went into the thighs this one on this side and this one on this side well this time they're going to go into these let's see these spots right here on the side of the hips so and it takes a little bit of doing I'm not gonna lie to you, it takes a little bit of doing. So we're gonna do that. And you know, essentially we're getting everything in here to collapse forward as far as we can. And the arms kinda wanna get in the way. So it is a little bit fidgety. But nonetheless, that's what's gotta happen. And you can see I can get it on this side and then and we can get it on this side. There we go, just like that. And it's nice and tight once you get it, but it, it, takes, it does take some finessing. So now we've got this conspicuous little thing right here. Let's just flip it up, and now we're gonna take the chest piece and just swing it forward, and then that just kinda hooks overneath, yeah, overneath that just hooks over that little tab right there. 
See? Just like that. And so now let's go ahead and flip it around to the back. We can open this panel here. That exposes the bird head. So we're going to rotate it around. And I've noticed that the head likes to catch on this panel. And I was a little bit concerned about that. I wondered if this middle panel had to move. And so I actually resorted to checking the directions. And no, this panel does not need to move. The head just kind of has to scrape past it. And then you can extend the bird head out. And you can even open the beak, which is always a nice feature, and rotate the head. And now we're going to close this door just like that. So we're getting really close now. Now at this point, we can continue rotating the shoulders in towards the body of the bird. And before we lock those into place, we've got this center thing. And you see this section right here, this rectangular section, that actually nests right into that groove right there. And it holds itself very nicely. And that's an unexpected move. I have to say that seeing the undersides of these fit together like this was surprising, but I really like it. And so then we can continue folding those shoulders forward and into the body. And then we can extend the bird talons and move the bird legs back and at this point the bird for all intents and purposes is transformed but of course we want to add all the extra bits so and of course like i said before there's lots of places to put the bits you can put them anywhere you want uh, in the instructions it has these double a battery packs going on to the sides just like this there you go and then it has the gun going down here like that and then this little engine thing going here uh, I, I'm not really a fan of that it kind of makes it look like it's got a leg tumor or something and you can put it anywhere you want. In fact, you can put it anywhere else and it would probably be better than where it is. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna put the engine right next to the bird's ear because it's important for him to be able to hear it if it runs out of gas. So we've got the missile and this piece and it does do something kind of cool. What you do is you see this five millimeter peg right here. Well, that's going to go into this hole, and then there's this little sort of shallow place right here. And that's going to align against this half peg a little bit. It doesn't really work all that well, but I guess it sort of aligns it. And then we've got this conspicuous plastic clamp looking thing on the underside of the missile. Well, that is going to grab right around this part here. So we're just going to snap that around there just like that. And now we can take these stabilizers and just fold them down against the back end of the bird. Once again, there's nothing retaining these. And I wish there were. I wish that there was like a little peg there or something so that these didn't just float freely but that's the way they are. But other than that, we've got a pretty cool looking bird mode. In the, in the wiki articles, it has been said that he's supposed to be a falcon, but he does look a lot more like a vulture. And actually, even, even when we saw the Gen 1 version, he looked very vulture-y, not very falcony. So, uh, you know, sometimes there's not a whole lot of communication between the designers and the people writing up what's happening. Now, I do like these wings. We've got articulation here. We've got articulation at the bit at the wingtips. We've, of course, got shoulder articulation so he can flap. He can swoop. He can dive bomb. He can 
wingspan. Okay, I'm stretching at this point. But pretty much every flying transformer name that you can think of, he can do it. Of course, the head sculpt is beautiful. That is a fantastic bird head. And the moving beak is great. The fact that he can tip his head to one side to the other. He can look up. He can look down. I wish that I could get him to, to move his head from side to side. Uh, that's a small conceit. I'll, I'll just deal with it. The, uh, the body of the bird is kind of a mechanical mess. The body doesn't look particularly bird-like. It really looks more like pieces of a missile truck with a bird head and wings attached. That being said, uh, the original actually looks like pieces of a missile truck with a bird head and wings attached. And we can see these side by side. There we go. Uh, the Generation 1 version is a little bit difficult to get to stand up. But we got it, and uh, you know, neither one is, oh, that's a little sad. Come on, come on, Double Dior. Here, we're just going to have him rest on his butt, and, uh, and, and that's fine. I do really like that the engineering on the new version is nice and tight. The, the limbs all go into their poses and stay. You can splay out the legs, and yes, it takes half of the body with it, but to get those action poses, you make some conceits. And as I've said before, when you're doing a beast mode, the articulation of the beast is so much of the play value, and this guy has a lot of it. The body is a little bit brick-like, especially for something that's supposed to be a bird, but uh, but if you get past that, you've got a lot of wing motion, you've got some good head motion, you've got some good leg motion. So he's really an impressive figure and an impressive toy all the way around. And especially for a third mode, this is actually really, really nicely done. And there he is. So that is Double Dealer in his Decepticon Vulture mode. Uh, one thing that I do notice is that there aren't any exposed Decepticon symbols. Now, you can flip up the panels from the shoulders and do that and do that. But the Decepticon symbols are upside down at that point. So is he saying down with Decepticons or uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't think that Megatron would take kindly to that. So, um, you know, maybe he better just kind of keep that one to himself. So that is Double Dealer in his third Vulture mode. And uh, I have to say it is pretty cool. Really nice, we've got the tail detail there. So yeah, that is him. Pretty awesome. So that's about it for Transformers War for Cybertron Earthrise Double Dealer. But keep your eyes open on this channel because we are going to be doing another video where we look at all three of these guys, their fascinating history, and their really interesting designs. So if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, maybe click the notification bell. How about a thumbs up? That would be great. We're still a very new channel and all of these things really help us grow while it also helps you to not miss amazing content. Is amazing a stretch? Sure, it's, you know, it's good content. So that's it. What's your favorite version of this duplicitous Decepticon slash Autobot mercenary? Let us know in the comments below. Other than that, so Retrobot, what do you think? Uh, is this guy a big deal or is he double trouble? <laughs> I knew he'd say that. <laughs>